Hello YouTube, it's Gareth Beavers here again and I'm here with the Sony Xperia X. Now this is quite a curious phone because on the one hand it is Sony's flagship device because it's the latest one, on the other hand it doesn't have the power, doesn't have quite the same spec sheet as the Xperia Z line. So is it a flagship phone? Let's take a deeper dive and find out. All right, so let's talk about the design of this phone and Sony reckons it's actually made a few changes to its overall industrial design. And in a way it has, as you can see down the sides here, the glass is slightly more curved into the edges. It does feel like a much more sleek and, I don't know, a kind of, it's equally as premium as other devices, but ultimately it does have a kind of more sleekness to it that maybe you haven't seen from other Sony devices. Uh, we're still seeing some of the same ports over here, covering the, uh, the SIM tool and the SD card slot. The bottom is uncovered, uh, and apart from that, you've only got the headphone slot. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because this phone is not waterproof, where Sony Xperia Z to Z5 have all been waterproof. That's kind of been the tagline of Sony. This time, we haven't got that. So, I don't know, it feels it's a big missing part to have, really. While the phone is probably okay if you get it out in the rain, because most devices are nowadays, I'm still not feeling fully comfortable. You can't drop this in the sink, for instance, if you're accidentally doing some washing up and you're looking at your phone at the same time, because that's what we all do. But ultimately, I feel like Sony getting rid of that again points to this not being a flagship phone, although we're not thinking we're gonna see another Z. But the design is good, it fits fairly well into the hand, the screen is of a decent quality and actually fairly vibrant as well. You've still got all the Bravia technology in there, you've got X-Reality, you've got a, a quite a high level of brightness so if you're pulling things right up. The auto brightness can really kick things up and make everything look a little bit sharper. So Sony's again done a really good job of bringing the screen technology up, but ultimately I'm not exactly sure if this is pushing things on in the design stakes or just a very small iteration forward. So there are a few key features on this phone that Sony should be proud of. Oh, we've talked about the screen already, it's, it's clear and it's vibrant. The other is the music player. Sony's again brought in its high-res audio capability, so upscaling sound to make it, make it even better through the headphones, and also just a, a load of different things that you can do to make it sound that much better. So if you wanted to go into the settings, for instance, you can pull open the sound quality. Uh, and as you can see, if you head into audio settings, you've got DCE HX, which upgrades the sound quality. Clear audio does make a big difference. And you've got a number of sound effects, even in down to sound, surround sound versions, which do make a difference. So sound quality in this is good. And it is nice to have Sony bringing something to maybe a cheaper end of the market, maybe a more mid-range phone, and still having that high-end sound quality. If you're a fan of the Sony phones, you'll know that one thing that Sony always talks about is the camera. On the back here, we've got a 23 megapixel sensor with a single LED flash. And again, it's a very high power camera for something that could be a mid-range phone. The issue I've got with it is it's not exactly the fastest. It's a good camera, but it's not the best. So if you take it down to sleep mode and you use the dedicated button on the side, yeah, it opens up, but it's not super quick. It, every time you take it, you know you're gonna get a little bit of lag, a little bit of a jump. Again, it's not terrible, but it's not perfect. And when you try to take a really quick photo, you want something that's quickly opened, in shot, and works very well. The camera itself is actually fairly well stocked. As you can see here, you've got different options going on. Superior Auto is definitely the one you'd want to use. But surprisingly, if it's something that's so strong and so powerful, there's not a lot you can do in terms of manual mode. So you can, you know, it automatically does things here, but you can, change a few different bits and pieces to color the brightness, but you haven't got those same pro modes that you've got for say for Samsung and for LG. That can be improved by downloading apps and augmenting it further, but I thought it'd be better for Sony. Now the interesting thing with this camera is that while yes, it's technically very adept, you can, do, you can take some really good pictures with it, often you have to really work for it. In night mode, as you can see here, everything's got a little bit blurred. It's, it's got some good light, but it hasn't got a lot of focus into it. If you're looking in the daylight again, you can see really clear pictures, the sky's, the sky's clear. Looking down the road, yeah, you can see the mud, you can see the different definition. It works quite nicely. The camera can take really quick photos and it can be really sharp and really clear. Putting your foot into mud there, you can see the splash. It shows the Sony camera is really adept, it's really technically able, and if you spend some time and really work to get the shot, it'll be good. Going again into the mystery of whether this is a flagship smartphone, the Sony Xperia X has a 2620 mAh battery. It's not the biggest on the market by a long way, but it's not a, no slouch either. In actual use, the battery didn't last that long overall. If you were doing too much with the phone, the screen really seems to take a lot of juice out of it. And also, again, it's quite buggy because as you can see here, going into battery, how long left? 111 hours, definitely not got that. You're basically gonna get a day out of this. Poking in further, you've got an interesting situation where the battery meter keeps only starting here. And you know, with that kind of descent, descent there, that's never gonna be 111 hours. So Sony really needs to work hard on improving the bugs in this system because again, it really needs to work harder. But you have got the stamina mode, which does make a difference. You can poke this open, decide which apps you want to actually work day to day, which ones you want to whitelist so they don't get shut down when the phone goes quiet. Stamina mode does make a difference and you've got ultra stamina mode as well, which basically takes, takes your phone down to an old Nokia and it can make calls and make text, a few of the other bits and pieces, but ultimately it's sitting in your pocket and just there for emergencies. 
So we've been through the key features of the Sony Xperia X, and as you can see, the camera is solid, if not spectacular. The battery life is good with some bugs, and the design is very much Sony. If you are a fan of the brand, you will like this because it's got a curved exterior, it fits even more nicely in the hand, and the screen technology is as good as ever. The question is, where does this phone fit in the market? It's got a Snapdragon 650 processor, but it's teamed with three gigabytes of RAM. So it's not the most powerful and it does stutter a little bit at times, but ultimately that's good enough. The camera itself is good, but it's probably not the best on the market. And so ultimately it's a little bit cheaper as a phone, but does it really work against the Samsung Galaxy S7s, the LG G5s, the HTC 10s of the world? These are all more slightly better spec phones. My question really is, does Sony need to make a high-end phone anymore? It's not a brand that's going to be taking over the number one slot anytime, so why bother putting all that power in? If it can do what it's supposed to do, the Sony Xperia X is a perfect phone. So if you are a big fan of the brand, or you just like the way Sony puts together phones, this is a really great phone. If you're looking for something that's really got all the high-end specs, there are better out there. But Sony's done well here, and there's going to be a good future ahead for the brand. So let us know in the comments below what you think of this phone. Is it flagship? Is it the phone that Sony should have made, or should we have more power? As always, we do read all the comments, so thank you very much for subscribing, thank you very much for liking, and thanks for stopping by.